Discovered by German anthropologist Madeleine Baumer over a three-year period from 2015 to 2018, Danuvius gugamosi came to be known from an upper and lower jaw fragment, a femur, shin bone, elbow bone, and a few vertebrae, all found in the Hammerschmidt clay pit in southern Germany. This primate will come to challenge a lot of assumptions on the evolution of human locomotion, and in this video, we will take a look at the evidence and the hypothesis proposed by Madeleine Baume and her team, and contrast it with what skeptics say, and then conclude with my perspective on the matter. Danuvius Gugamosi lived in the forests of southern Germany 11.6 million years ago, maneuvering through the trees in search of food, whilst doing its best to avoid the large cats it cohabited the forests with. And it was roughly the size of a bonobo with a similarly gracile build. Quick note, since I only have access to study previews and not full articles, I'll only be going off what I can access through the previews of the papers. Now with that out of the way, let's continue. A paper published by Madeleine Baumet on Nature.com claims that Danuvius gugamosi's postcranial anatomy exhibits the telltale signs of a biped. Features such as a broad thorax, lengthy lumbar spine, and extended hips and knees. If her claims hold true, then this uproots the last 12 million years of hominid locomotion and evolution as we understand it. Prior to the discovery of Danuvius and other hominids like it, such as the later Artipithecus, it was assumed that bipedalism began emerging when knuckle-walking apes began to adopt bipedalism in response to the disappearance of the forests and woodlands they depended on for survival. This would also force us to reconsider the established chronology, as it was originally assumed that bipedalism in hominids evolved around 5 to 7 million years ago, depending on who you ask, with Sahelanthropus, Auroran, and Artipithecus all having been suggested as the oldest bipedal hominids. But what do the skeptics have to say about these findings? A paper published by the anthropologist Scott A. Williams is of the opinion that Bomber's claims are unsubstantiated referencing that she based the claim of a lengthy lumbar spine not on a series of lower vertebrae, but on a single lower vertebrae. Additionally, they argue that the controverse facet cannot be used as evidence of bipedalism, as there are many ape species, both living and extinct, that possess this feature, and that the positioning of the diaphragmatic vertebrae in relation to the thoracic vertebrae isn't a necessarily a slam dunk for the pro-bipedal argument. In summary, argument. they argue its anatomy aligns with a strictly suspensory lifestyle, with some anatomical similarities to gorillas and orangutans, as opposed to humans and chimpanzees. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at these comparison charts. Now when looking at the bones, the first thing I noticed was the similarities between the proportions of the head, neck, and the trochanter of the human and Danubius thigh bones. In terms of thickness, it looks to be more akin to the chimpanzee and human leg, and when looking at the knee joints, it seems to resemble the knee joint of the human, with it being of the same size and similar shape. When looking at the thoracic vertebrae, one can see that the body of the vertebra has a similar shape to that of the human, with the only difference being the width. The shape and size of the cavity within the vertebra, also known as the neural foramen, resembles the gorillas, and the lamina, or vertical protrusion you see, is similar in height to the humans, but more robust along with the rest of the vertebrae, like the gorilla. My own personal conclusion with the limited resources I do have is that Danuvius, whilst maybe not a full-on biped like later hominids, was certainly on its way there, as evidenced by its mosaic of characteristics, such as the human-like structure of its lower body and the more hybrid mosaic of features in its lumbaric vertebra. And along with the grasping foot, this primate would have been rather adept at both climbing and upright walking, providing it took place in the trees. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is all things past and paranormal. Thanks for watching and have an awesome rest of your day.